There are 5.5 million patients afflicted with heart failure in the US. This grows at 350,000 a year. Half these patients suffer from functional mitral regurgitation or functional tricuspid regurgitation. This is a condition where the leaflets of the valve don't properly coapt. They leave a gap, and then on contraction, blood flows backward in the heart. Current treatments are inadequate. Medications typically don't address this segment well. In surgery, most patients are too sick for surgery, so they can't be treated. So it ends up transcatheter solutions end up being something that can be applied more at a lower risk profile and, more er and earlier in the process. So let me talk about what Carlin, the Carlin platform looks like. In the center on the left, lower left, is a delivery catheter. On the right, or on a, is a uh, steering catheter. On the right is a delivery catheter, and the top is an implant. The process that we use is a transfemoral delivery of the outer sheath through a, septal, a transeptal penetration to the area of the valve. The delivery catheter actually carries the implant to the place uh, to the valve and attaches it to the valve leaflet. The implant can be seen in the upper part. It is maybe this area here. You can see on this bench system. So how does this work? On the left, what you're seeing is actually, this is regurgitated, the, the blood going backward through the heart. And then during diastole, of course, the leaflets swing out of the way. With the Carlin implanted, it actually extends the leaflet, so the leaflet's properly co-apt and seal. And then during diastole, it swings out of the way as to not cause any other issues. This is what the implant looks like. It's magnified quite a bit here. It's only a couple millimeters. Um, it's a nitinol frame and an FDA-approved fabric. It comes in three different sizes, and you can apply multiple implants on the same leaflet. Here's what it looks like when it's implanted. So to give you an idea how this all works, this is the tip of the delivery catheter. And what you see here, there's some small tendons that hold it in place, and when that's threaded and then grabs the anterior leaflet of the heart, or of a leaflet in the heart, it's released. You can then release it Look at it under echo, and if you don't like the way it's deployed, you can retrieve it and then redeploy it again. So you actually can make the measurement real time whether it's actually resolving MR. It is uh, consistent with what is done. This would be the competitor here would be uh, the Mitra Clip, which is by far the dominant technology in this space. It's the same size catheter. It doesn't require X-ray. It is a shorter procedure because you only have to drive one leaf or grab one leaflet, and it doesn't require two people to operate the system. A single person can actually do this. And it's quite easy to adjust. So what you're seeing here is an upper left is the interior view looking down through the heart and under ultrasound. And this is the, from the ventricle looking up. And what you can see, this is an endothelialized area here that within 30 days, this becomes endothelialized and you actually can wean the patients off of anticoagulants. So it actually has a great risk profile. Looking at it a different way, this is a little bit more quantitative. This area here, where the arrows are, is what regurgitation looks like in ultrasound. And if you look to the right after the implant has been placed, it is totally resolved. So there's no remnant regurgitation, unlike the other technologies that are in the field. So this is a comparison, and annuloplasty is there's a whole category and a number of technologies being developed in that space, as well as clip-based technologies. But in general, this gives you the idea. The, the, this operability, or the ability to adjust paraoperability and to treat large orifices is pretty significant in this area, as well as the fact there's no remnant MR. So you're not just resetting in time, but you're actually resolving it. This is what our team looks like. My name is Brian Walsh. I'm the CEO. I have 30 plus years, and I've taken a number of early stage technologies to market. Working with Dr. Padala, who runs the cardiovascular research lab at Emory University, and Dr. Eric Saren, they have invented and developed this techno technology over some years. We do have someone for design control and quality systems so that it's uh, properly characterized for the FDA as well as a technical staff. In addition to our luminaries, we actually brought on someone who um, is from Structural Heart at the FDA as a consultant. It's helping us through strategy. And we brought in James Green as well, who has been in this space for many, many years. And, uh, has a strong reputation in the area. To date, we've uh, achieved 2.3 million in non-dilutive funding. This is mostly for a lot of animal work. We've done uh, about two dozen large animals in multiple cohorts over time, both acute and chronic. 
um, and it's been recognized in multiple different uh, uh, public settings. So this is our plan. Um, we're currently about to reach design freeze on the technology. After this point, we'd go through the verification and validation work, achieve an IDE, and ultimately go to a first demand trial. The trial we're planning is 10 to 12 patients, where we look at 30-day, six-month, and 12-month echo, and look at regurgitation at those, those different points. So we have a compelling technology, a very large addressable market. We have an experienced team and strong IP. We're looking for $6 million to get us through this first in-man trial. Thank <laughs> you.